In my experience, the most important thing to address first is mindset. And what I mean by that is I'm going to teach you how to think. And more importantly, in this case, how not to think. Now remember, this is a fresh approach for lifetime learning. So this is not going to be your traditional academic plan. And in order to fully embrace that, we need to talk. We're going to talk about specifically the word student. So right now, I can feel your energy because there are two different kinds of people. Either you reacted in an anxious way. Did you feel tense when I said student? Or did you think, oh, okay, I'm ready. So if you're like me and you had a great experience as a student and that was where you were successful, you probably have no negative emotions tied to that word. And that's okay, but you do have habits tied to that word. If you had a negative reaction, it means you probably had a negative experience. Maybe you hated school. Maybe you weren't that great at being a student. So this is good for you. So this will be really refreshing. Okay, what I want you to do is think of the word student, all of your memories attached to it, and let it go. Today, you stop being an English student and you start being an English learner and brace yourself, you are an English speaker. Ah, teacher Tanya, no, I'm not. My English is terrible, I can't speak. I don't care. This isn't about how confident you are. This is about what you do. And you are not learning English to stay in a corner and fill out your exercises and that's it. So when you're a lifetime learner, you need to use it. And don't worry, I'm going to help. You might think, I have no one that I can speak English to. Don't worry, I'm going to help. For now, all I need you to do is trust me and let go of being a student. Now, let me tell you why. So what I find is that when people are students, it's a similar approach to a car, for example. You can study the car. You can study the aerodynamics, the color of the paint, the chemistry of the paint. I don't know, all of these different components. But a car is not made to be studied. It's made to be driven. <laughs> You gotta drive it. In the same way with English, we spend so much time on grammar exercises, on prepositions, on reading and analyzing, but you don't use it. English is made to be spoken. English is global. Like that's the cool part. And I will bet any money that that's why over half of you are studying it. It's a global language that connects you for business, for culture, pop culture, just really cool stuff. I'll be honest, it's just cool. <laughs> so we're not going to just study the car or look at the car in the garage. We're going to drive it. I'm going to teach you how to use your English now that you're an English speaker and a learner and not a student. By the way, there's nothing wrong with the word student. It's just that words hold power and memory. And we're going to choose the words that help us break through our obstacles and get to the next level. Now, another thing with mindset is I want you to let go of another interesting or important component of being a student, and that's test taking. This method does not involve tests. You're not going to take a test after a certain point and think, yes, I'm fluent, I'm done. You're done when you die. <laughs> that's this plan. This plan is for life. So I want you to forget about tests and scores. Now, those of you who are bad students in school, you're probably super happy. And those of you who were, were good students, you're probably feeling a little anxious, like, but if I don't take a test, how will I know if I improved? Don't worry, I gotcha. I'm going to show you how to measure progress later in the course. For now, I just wanted to let you know, there are no tests. This is real life. <laughs> now, the next thing you might be thinking is, ugh, this teacher probably is going to tell me grammar doesn't matter, but I know I need it. No, of course grammar matters, but we're going to approach grammar differently. I don't really care about labels for the sake of labels because in real life, when you're having a conversation, you're not going to stop and think, huh, do I use the past progressive here? You don't have time in a real life conversation. So my goal with grammar is to help you tell a story. So I'm going to teach you how to think about it. Like if you want to tell a story about a certain kind of event in the past, then you look up the grammar that you need for that with the goal of telling that story. 
For example, punctuation. Oh, punctuation. I love it. And it's the one thing I see all the time that's not being valued and that's not being used. So I'm going to teach you why punctuation is important, not because I'm a grammar nerd, which I am, but because it changes your story. If you want to be clear and understood, that's why you use punctuation. So this is the kind of connections that we're doing. We're not studying grammar and punctuation to pass a test or do an exercise correctly, but it's because I want you to tell a story correctly. I want someone to understand your text message or your email. See? So this is how we're going to change the way we think about learning. Now, the other component of studying in the traditional sense is that you memorize. And I do believe that there is a time and place where that's useful, but this is not it. So when you're at this level and you're learning English for life, memorizing doesn't help you. Again, that specific kind of recall is not easy to access when you're having real life conversations or when you're watching a TV show or sending a quick email to a colleague. So instead, when we do learn vocabulary, I'm going to teach you things like using personal examples. If you like making flashcards, that's fine. You can still use that technique, but I don't want you to put a new word on one side and the definition on the other. I want you to put a new word on one side and then a sentence using it in an example about you, about your real life. This is the way that I teach my learners when I give classes to learn prepositions, to learn vocabulary, to learn phrasal verbs and collocations because it stops being about, am I memorizing a phrasal verb? It's about finding an example in your real life and that emotional, personal connection, that's what your brain will recall in the moment. So it takes away the middleman that I like to call it, the, the middle knowledge holder, and you immediately connect your need, your memory, your personal example with what you're saying in the moment. So it's a much faster process. It's a much faster way to remember the right thing at the right moment. And another really important component about the mindset is that you have to, and this is going to be an effort for some of you, you have to accept that you won't be perfect. You have to accept you won't understand or know everything. I want you to accept, wait for it, that you're going to make mistakes and that your mistakes are okay. So I want you to relax your shoulders. I can feel some of you tensing up. Relax. <laughs> because this is a big part of a healthy mindset for learning for life. You need to be okay with making mistakes. Don't wait until you know all prepositions and how to use them before you speak. You just need to do it. And when you observe native speakers, you'll notice that we make mistakes. I make mistakes. This video that I made for you, I had to film it five times because I kept making mistakes and that's okay. <laughs> so I want you to be okay with that. I want you to be okay with, oh, are you ready? Your accent. Yeah, talking about you. Your accent. Although accent reduction lessons and accent reduction techniques are helpful, I want you to be okay with it. You know, I see people that really judge themselves harder than they are judged by society. Like you might think, oh, they're going to know I'm a foreigner or I'm going to be judged. Honestly, it doesn't matter. No matter how much you try, there are very few people that can completely eliminate their accent. In fact, even as a native speaker, we have biases about regional accents. Someone from the South in the US has a different accent and a different judgment than someone from the Northeast or someone from the West Coast. So even within the language itself for native speakers, there are differences. And that's not the most important part. If you have a little accent, I'll be honest, most people find it very endearing. And I like to think of it as wearing it with a badge of pride because that means that you know more than one language. <laughs> That's amazing. A lot of you watching this are multilingual, you're polyglots. So a little bit of accent, I think, is a point of pride, but I want you to think of it that way. Now I'm not saying don't reduce your accent. Of course, we're going to work on that too, but it shouldn't be shameful. So I want you to think about that. Embrace it, love it. 
Because at the end of the day, part of that has to do with loving yourself. And self-love is a big part of language learning because it affects our confidence. Okay? Which of these does not belong? A. I need to use what I learn. B. I will not memorize vocabulary. C. I should never make mistakes. Or D. I will appreciate my accent. If you said C. I should never make mistakes, correct! You should make mistakes and you will make mistakes. And I promise it will be okay. Good work!